weeks of what they're calling emergency medicine boot camp, which is basically going to be a bunch of small groups and little workshops and clinics to get us ready for residency, which will be starting in a few months. Crazy, I know. So I will be pretty much at the hospital 9 to 5 or 9 to 4, hopefully earlier, 9 to 3 or 9 to 2, hopefully. <laughs> Usually on a Sunday night to get ready for hospital or work, I do a few things. So one of the things that I do is plan out what I'm going to eat for the week. So I had wanted to meal prep and I didn't really get a chance to do it. I basically planned out my meals for tomorrow using things that I already have more or less ready. I also made more of my veggie soup that I talked about in my Instagram story a couple weeks ago. Got a lot of questions about how to make it. Somebody asked me if I could put it up on YouTube so that they can refer back to it if they need to. There's some baby carrots, one apple, one tomato, a stalk of broccoli, one onion, and this is about a quarter of cabbage. And in addition to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of water and everything's gonna go into this pressure pot. We let it cook like this for about 10 to 15 minutes. That's it. Take a look. So it looks like this and most of the vegetables are gonna be really mushy at this point. Everything just kind of falls apart. And what I do with all these great veggies is I blend it up with an immersion blender. Blend like this. This is the final product. So just as a little background to the soup, I learned this recipe from my mom. In Korean, my mom calls it hedokjusu, which roughly means detox juice. I think it's just like a nice, great vegetable soup. I usually have it for breakfast every morning. I just want to point out that I would never do this hair in residency. I don't think that I could have ever done it as a third year medical student either because I'm just not really the person to spend a ton of time doing my hair. One, because I'm not really good at it, but two, like I would rather spend that time sleeping or planning out my food or something. It's really nice that I can kind of experiment with these things as a fourth year because I do have a lot more time, but I think that I'm probably going to grow this hair out for residency. So so, but it's really fun while well, it's lasting. Good night. Good morning, everyone. Running really late. Just drinking my soup and heading out. All right, see you guys later. So today we learned about sign-off. So basically when you're done with your shift, you're supposed to give all the information about your patients that are active to the next person that's coming on to cover for you. There's a lot of this communication in medicine. I feel like most of medical school, especially third year, fourth year, is learning how to gather information and learning how to pass on that information to other people who are working with you. The sign out process is a similar thing where you have to be efficient, but you also have to give all the relevant information so that if something happens, the next person that came on to cover for you uh, knows what to do. So. We we learned a little bit about that. We did some exercises and now I'm home. So if you guys remember from the last episode, um, I'm doing a book challenge with my boyfriend. We're picking out one fiction book and one non-fiction book and reading it. I have started a book called Bellevue. It's about the Bellevue Hospital. So I'm gonna read some of that today. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday. Today is gonna be a similar day to yesterday where we have some lectures, some workshops. I have to lead a case today in the afternoon and I'm gonna be leading a case about infant vomiting. I'm gonna be presenting it like you might do it uh, at a morning report or something where you give the chief complaint and people ask you questions and you give more information about the case and then you solve the case together. So that's what I'll be doing. And EM is the most awesome specialty ever because um, they told us that we can wear scrubs. Um, everyone else has to wear business casual, so. Okay. See how I didn't cut your finger off? Should I have my elbow bent? Uh, but we're starting up here, so okay. relax. It actually gets really tiring. I know I'll get you next Christmas. Yes, a roll of this. <laughs> you will end up with some folds around the elbow. You just don't want to have sharp things jabbing into the patient, and you want to abuse plenty of padding there first. Okay. Uh, good thing we threw that extra piece. Yeah, yeah. That's a good part. Thank you. Thank you. No <laughs> 
today is Thursday and I realized yesterday I talked about doing like simulation cases at school um, and I don't think that I really explained what that was. Simulation is like a relatively new way of learning where you have these high fidelity mannequins. These mannequins, they're like thousands of dollars. They, they blink, they have a pulse. You can do a ton of things with them. Usually they're hooked up to a computer so you can talk to it and somebody in the control room can talk back ask the patient you can hook them up to a monitor you can check their vitals and depending on the model there's a lot more things that you can do some of them have IV access some of them have abdominal stuff that's going on so simulation is one of the many ways that a lot of students learn how to deal with a real patient they try to make it as real as possible and it's used especially a lot in emergency medicine I guess just because of the sort of the unpredictable nature of emergency medicine you always walk in you kind of never know what you're gonna see so they like to kind of prepare you for situations so you do a lot of different cases during these simulation cases there's different roles so there are six of us there's a team leader there's a airway person there's a primary survey slash like physical exam person there's a person who hooks the patient to the monitor and does the procedures there's a pharmacist and there's a a recorder slash reporter so you record everything that's going on you know what medications you gave what happened if there's a code that's going on you write down all the times of the medications and shocks that are given and then you're also responsible for reporting to any consultants that might call because you have all the information in front of you so those are the roles and usually there's um a little informational session right after just talking about the case what you think could have gone better what you think you did well um so that's that's basically what we did yesterday during our sim session and we're gonna have more of those sim sessions in the future and then usually in residency for emergency medicine they try to incorporate sim as much as possible as well it's also like one of the fellowships that you can go into after emergency medicine you learn more about sim you learn how to run them you learn how to make them effective so all around like really interesting stuff and I think it's a really great learning tool so Hey guys, it's Friday night and I am officially done with the first half of my emergency medicine boot camp. So this week was pretty exhausting, but I got to learn a lot of really cool procedures. And I just wanted to say if you guys are in the more um, boring part of your medical education, whether it's high school, um, your pre-med years or first two years of medical school, don't give up. There's a lot of really fun and hands-on things that are coming your way in the next few years. And you'll definitely get your hands dirty and learn a lot of really practical things that are, you know, a little more fun than just book studying and taking exams. And with that, I wanted to close this video and just wanted to thank you guys for watching this week's vlog. I hope you guys found it interesting and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.